everybody and welcome to your Google Classroom course. This is our very first lesson to help you get started with using Google Classroom. So what we need to do first is of course get to Google Classroom. Well how do you do that? I'm going to show you a couple of ways and we're going to go through a couple of pitfalls and pro tips for you. And so if we go to our computer, a couple of ways you can find Google Classroom. The first thing you need to make sure that you have done is that you have signed into Chrome. And if you look over here in the top right hand corner, right beside the three little dots, just under your minimize, expand and close buttons, you're going to see who is signed in. It's really important that you're signed in with your Edmonton Catholic Schools email and password in order to be able to access anything in Google Classroom and all of your different Google materials for that matter. So step one, are you signed in? Now for your students using Chromebooks, as soon as they logged into the Chromebook, that is them signing into Google. So you don't have to worry about this step. This is just for us teachers who are perhaps using our desktop computers or laptops. So now that we make sure that we're signed in, what's really great is you get a folder on your browser bar called ECSD bookmarks. And so if you look here, just on the left hand side, you can see ecsd.net bookmarks. And here's all those very important places to visit. And one of those is Google Classroom. This is a fantastic way to get your kids quickly to where they need to go, especially if you're teaching younger grades. They log in, they go to Google Classroom. And finally, the other way that you can get to Google Classroom is simply by typing right in the browser bar, classroom.google.com, and you'll be right there. However you choose to do it, this is where we wanna go, mission control. Now, if you've never been here before, you're probably going to see a little message saying welcome. It may try to take you on a tour. I've been here before, and what you can see is any classrooms that I have or any classrooms that I'm enrolled in as a student, because we know that Google Classroom can be even used for professional development. So here I can see, if I see an image, a teacher image on top of any of my classrooms, that means that I'm enrolled in that classroom as a student. All the other ones are mine. Now, in order to start a new classroom, we can do this in just seconds, and that is using the plus button in the top right hand corner that says create or join a class. Keep in mind that students cannot create a class. There's no secret societies. They can only join a class using the class code you give them, which you're going to see shortly. So I'm going to say create a class. Here is where you can give it a class name, the section, subject, and room number. So once I have all that information, um, I can put that in. One of our pro tips for you is to make sure you start small. If you have one Google Classroom that is for everything that you're doing, so Mrs. Rofi's grade five classroom, and I put seven subjects and 10 months material in there, it's very hard for the students to navigate. It's also uh, harder for you as the teacher to be able to navigate and find the materials when you wanna reuse them later. So one of the recommendations we give to people, this is our first little pro tip for you, is to think of Google Classrooms in very small units. So perhaps I have Mrs. Rofi's Science Topic A classroom. And so I'm going to build that science classroom just for topic A. And just like in our physical classrooms, where at the end of that unit, we get the students to empty their Dewey tanks or their binders and start with fresh new material. In the same sense, we can do that with Google Classroom. I can simply archive that classroom and start another classroom for topic B or for something else. And so kids sort of get used to that notion of, I have multiple classrooms, just like I have multiple Dewey tanks. And we can do things like design them with different banners and colors to help kids get used to which ones they they want to see. When it comes to reusing posts later, that's what you're really going to notice and appreciate is, oh, now it's easier that I have smaller classrooms for my own self to be able to go through and find my materials. You don't have to listen to me. It's completely up to you. But I thought I was super smart and I had one Google Classroom for all my PD and I ended up changing it after the end of the year because I realized just how big that it got. So back to this, I'm going to go ahead and say create and instantly I will have a classroom created and it will even give me a default theme and banner to be able to go along with it. So that's it. I've created a classroom in just a couple of seconds with no coding skills required. One thing I will show you about your classroom that's really nice um, is there is only three places to be able to navigate your stream, your classwork, and your people, which we'll be going through in the next lessons as well as on this main page, it will give you a default image, but just know that you can also select a theme from the gallery that they've provided of some beautiful um, banners and pictures you can choose from. So I could go through and I could choose something else with a different color. 
It will change the look of my site. There's also the ability to upload a photo. Uh, we're gonna be covering that in uh, one of our later Geeky lessons where you have the opportunity to create your own banner, maybe with some Bitmojis and some designs. So just look down in the lessons to see how we can do that using a simple tool called Google Drawings. You can make a banner in seconds and have that uploaded to your site as well. So that's really the basics. This is your site. This is the, the mission control for your classroom. This is where you want them to visit each day. To get back to your main list of classrooms, just always look for that pancake stack in the top left-hand corner. That's your classroom main menu. This is where you can see, again, all of your classes. But this is also where you can get to that landing page where you'll see all of the different classes that you are part of. Note that they go in chronological order of them being created, but you can actually click the three little dots and you can move your classes so that they can go to a different list order if you want to see specific ones in specific order. So I could take this one and I could move it and I could choose where I want it to be able to go in the list, move things up and down um, and just be able to have that move around. So you started your first Google Classroom. That's your mission. Can you create a Google Classroom and be able to follow along with some of the next tutorials, be able to include some amazing content like announcements, materials, and assignments, making your life as a teacher a lot easier. If you have any questions, please remember to just give me an email.